Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Oh, come on, be less formal. Good evening. I, uh, I think we have a theme of slightly overweight bald men, uh, except for Russell. But now I'm the brown version of Russell and Don and I, we get confused. And I know people are like, gosh, you look just like those guys. Yeah, I look just like them. I don't look anything like them. I have a tough left of my hair. I think I look like Dodi El Fayed. I don't know if you noticed that. I do remember that day, and I do remember that time, and I, I remember looking at Peter Mansbridge in the back, and, and he did go like this. He was like, crap. And he stepped out, and he came back, and later we had supper together. He's like, uh, you're really good. I was like, you're on TV. <laughs> and he's like, do you have an agent? I was like, no. Do you have one to offer? He's like, you're a smart aleck. I'm like, you're on TV. I will say tonight what I said then. I think you have the potential to be a beacon of hope to communities across the globe. I think that because you have everything that has come into alignment and that the hand of divine providence or cosmic coincidence or whatever your worldview is, whatever your worldview is, has shined favorably on you. And you have the human resources and human capital you have the natural resources and natural capital. You have an energy and desire. You have leadership. You have all of these things and the stars have aligned and you can create something special. But mark my words, history will judge you. History will judge you 20 years and 25 and 30 years and 50 years and 100 years from today. History will judge what you did with that opportunity. You will just be another one of the series of boom towns that have occurred throughout history and I could line them up and give those names to you. Or you could be a defining moment in history, just like Athens was during the time of Pericles. When he and the rest of the Pericleans, uh, the rest of the Athenians who were under his leadership, made a decision that they would do something that had never been done before. They would govern themselves. And they were willing farmers and shop owners and Hippolytes and the like. And they said, I will give of myself for the beauty of Athens. They built the buildings on the top of the Acropolis. Those were built by citizens. It was a public works project. And it was a, it was a symbol of what Athens stood for. And isn't it interesting? Those, those pillars still stand today. And they were not built by master builders. They were built by regular citizens. And they did something special that resonates throughout history to you. And I believe in my heart of hearts you have that same opportunity. Tonight... We've come to celebrate. Celebrate, acknowledge, and recognize individuals who have given of themselves and asked nothing in return. As I looked at the names and I looked at the faces, I've read the materials, you had sent it to me, but I started to realize that, that people like that changed my life. Punk kid on the street, no opportunity, could barely read, took the short bus to school. How many of you are taking the short bus? <laughs> took the short bus. I saw a couple of you on the bus with me. Took the short bus to school. How many of you are involved in working with kids and youth? Volunteers of kids and youth or leaders of kids and youth? You changed my life. The early morning that you came in, the, the late night that you spent, the setting up of the activity, the raising of the funds, the governance, the organization, you changed my life. Maybe it wasn't you personally, but somebody like you. Anybody in here work with special needs kids? Anybody work with special needs kids? My son doesn't talk, he doesn't speak. He has this thing, maybe you haven't heard of it, it's called autism. He doesn't talk. I can talk a dog off my meat truck. A hungry dog, sir, a hungry dog off a meat truck. <laughs> but my little boy don't talk, and he's five. Well, those of you that work with kids with special needs, with physical barriers or uh, 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 mental barriers or invisible challenges, you touch my family every day. Anybody work with people who are hungry or maybe find themselves without a place to stay tonight? Anybody volunteer or help with that? Well, the day I was eating out of a garbage can, man, you came and you helped me. You didn't treat me like dirt. You didn't treat me with disrespect. You didn't kick me out of your place. You embraced me. You loved me. You saw the potential in me. See, all of you in the room, you're world changers. 
You make a significant impact in every citizen. Collectively, you as a sector make a significant impact in every citizen in this community from cradle to grave. That's you. We're here to celebrate that. In a day and age where we have to compel, beg, cajole, lock in the trunk, people to come and give up their time. How do you know what I'm talking about right now? In a day and age where we have to do that, you've taken a stance and said, I am my brother's keeper. I do care if someone is hurting or in need. I am willing to give of myself and ask nothing in return. I will never get my name on the side of a building, nor will I have a street named after me. Although maybe, Melissa, we can work out that street name thing. You know, hill is pretty common. I mean, we could find a hill. I mean, uh... How many of you say we could find a street named hill? Oh, okay, we got to work on that. It was a little tepid, a little tepid. You're not going to get that kind of recognition, but that's not why you do it. You don't do it because you aspire for some, some kind of award. You don't do it because you aspire for public office. No offense to those in public office. You don't do it uh, because you aspire to be clapped or patted on the back. You do it for the simple, clear, understandable that it's the right thing to do. And we're a better community because of you. You touched my life in so many different ways. And I'm a better person. There's a, a, a quote that I, I, I gave a long time ago and people repeat it all the time. I believe that every community, every neighborhood, every individual is one thought, one word, one action, one person away from being better tomorrow than it was yesterday. And I believe that you or you or you or you can be that one person. And people always think that I, 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 I love that quote and, 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 and hang on to that because, well, weren't you, the, you and your wife the one persons that started that school that had never been started before for those homeless kids? No. Well, we're, 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 well, don't you believe in the power of one person because uh, uh, you were that one person that started that first of its kind outreach to the, to the homeless? Or those projects in Uganda? Or maybe that thing uh, in, in Newfoundland where you've given away 20 playgrounds in Newfoundland. Isn't, isn't that why you believe in the power of one person? No. I believe in the power of one person because I, of the hundreds of one persons along my life that made a difference and significant impact in my life. I should be in jail. I should be a piece of junk. I should have nothing. But because of your sector, because of the voluntary sector, I am what I am. And because I am what I am, 137 projects across the country, from Belle Island, Newfoundland, to Port Alberni, BC. Projects as far away as Uganda, always as volunteers. But that's not because of me, that's because of you. So if you get down, if you get beat up, if you get a little jaded and crusty, and you need a symbol of, of the result of your work, look no further than the chubby brown man because I'm the net effect of your work. I'm, I am a result of you collectively. So tonight we're here to celebrate heroes, people who have given of themselves. And as I thought about that, I thought, what were the keys? What were the keys to these people? What, what set them apart? What, what constants do they all have? And what do they all possess that I could learn and, and the rest of us can learn from? All of these nominees, what's going on? <sighs> This way, this way, what's your name? No, come here, come here. <laughs> okay, listen, I'm, what's that girl's name? Who's with that girl? No, seriously, what is it? Tanika. Tanika? Right now, let's do some philanthropy. I got 500 bucks. Anybody that wants to join me later, come and see me at the podium. Let's start a RESP for that little girl right now. I'm, I'm not joking. You in? He's in. Raise your hand if you're in. Let's change, let's change a kid's life right now. Let's set her up. Let's, let's start a fund for her right now. I have no idea who she is, but the hand of, the hand of divine providence just put her in our lives. And how many say that was one cute little girl? 
Let's right now, let's start a fund for her. So who's with her? Where are her parents? Or... That's who went to the bathroom? As totally off script, but that was really cool. So if you're in, when this is all said and done, we'll meet at the podium. Everybody will cut a check or everybody will cut cash or we'll figure it all out. And then we'll start an educational fund for that little girl so that when she turns 18, she's set up. Listen, that's called philanthropy. And that's just a, a, a symbol of what all of you have done. There's a poem. It goes like this. I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. That which I can do, I ought to do. And that which I ought to do, I will do. Most people in life get stuck after the first couple words. I am only one. You look at the tragedies and trials and tribulations of our communities, of our country, you hear of the heinous crimes that occur to little kids, to adults, to seniors. Crimes that I can't even speak of in public. We know for a fact somewhere in a, a, a 200 kilometer radius, someone's making crystal meth as we speak and look to sell it to our citizens. Am I right or wrong? As we speak right now, there's a pedophile within a 500 kilometer radius trying to find a new and innovative way to snatch my little girl off a playground. Am I right or wrong? I am only one. How many would agree with me? It's easy for us to move into our gated communities or go into our home where we got seven different toys out in front. That's like every town, every house in Fort McMurray. But anyway, <laughs> it's really easy for me to pull in that garage and the door goes down and say, I'm only one. I can't take that on. The author of that poem put a comma and wrote, but I am one. What I've learned from all of you in reading your nominations reading info about you is that you have an inherent belief that tomorrow can be better than it was yesterday. That's why you're doing what you're doing. You believe. You believe that tomorrow can be better. That was the same belief that, that Nelson Mandela had. That was the same belief that Gandhi had. The same belief that Martin Luther King had. The same belief that took an empire from the borders of Macedonia throughout the world. The same belief that led a 16-year-old girl, girl to help her capture the territory known as France. The same belief that caused a Terry Fox to unite a nation. And that's one constant between all of you that we're nominating, that we're celebrating tonight. You believe that tomorrow can be better than it was yesterday. You believe in the human capacity. You believe in the human potential. You believe that through your actions, although they be small, and although others may not see them or know of them, you believe they can make a difference. And we should learn from you. Because it is that spirit of belief that transforms communities. Belief. 70 billion people have lived on this planet. There's nobody like you. There's never been anybody like you. There'll never be anybody like you. You come from the species that though you do not have wings, you can fly. You come from the species that made it to the moon and back. You harness electricity. That's you. So don't tell me we can't get drugs out. Don't tell me we can't defeat the pedophile. Don't tell me we can't defeat poverty and ignorance. Don't tell me that. Because you're the same damn people that said the world was flat. You're the same people that locked up Marconi because he said that words could travel through the air without wires. They locked him up. Because he was a crazy man. <laughs> and how many of you know that Garth Brooks is not a good look? How many of you agree with that? Are you kidding me? I mean, Russell looks like Britney Spears, but I look like Garth Brooks. <laughs> Put my black hat on. <laughs> Belief. You've taught me as I read your stuff that you believe. You've done innovative and creative things. Why? Because you believed. You've stepped out of, out of your comfort zone to try things that hadn't been done because you believe. You stood by kids and you stood by seniors and you stood by them and said, I believe in you, and you gave the gift of belief. That's why we're honoring you tonight. I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. You taught us the power of choice. You took the $86,000 that you've been given every day. $86,000? Yeah, there's 86,400 seconds in a day, and they're given to me as a gift to spend however I want. And history will judge me on how I invest that $86,000. Will I invest it in, in looking just after me? 
Will I invest it by just making my, my life a little bit easier? Or will I invest it by lightening the burden of my fellow man? Not how did he die, but how did he live? Not what did he gain, but what did he give? These are the yardsticks to measure the worth of a man as a man, regardless of birth. There's no U-Hauls going to heaven, y'all, just so you know. It's not what I can accumulate. I was in the venture capital business. I was in the casino business. It's not how much I can accumulate. That's not what I'll be defined by. What I'll be defined by is what I give away, what I give. I'm only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. Choice. What am I going to choose to do with my $86,000? Well, you've shown us an example. You've shown us the way. You've taken some of your $86,000. You haven't said, I'm too busy. I'm too slammed. I'm too overwhelmed. You've said, I'll do something. I can't do everything necessarily, but you've taught us that you could do something with your early mornings and your late nights and your weekends, and even sometimes sacrificing from your own life and family. You've shown us the impact you can make when we choose to do something. You've shown us the way. I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but dang it, I can do something. That which I can do, I ought to do. If you haven't figured it out yet, I was not born in Canada. I don't know if you figured that out yet. Hey, she's like, that man is scary. Get him away from me. <laughs> wow. You know what? 18 years, 19 years from now, when that girl goes on to be an attorney or a chemical engineer or whatever she goes on to be, all of us will never meet her again. We'll not know about that. But how many of you know we'll sleep comfortably at night? We set that girl up. That just, it's good stuff. So I wasn't born in Canada. Um, uh, I was born in a foreign land, a place called Iran. Anybody ever heard of Iran? I think it's properly pronounced Iran. I was born in Iran, and I was adopted. I was purchased on the black market for two cases of scotch, it's the absolute truth, by United States Air Force Sergeant, Sergeant John W. Hill. And he took me out of Iran and brought me to the States where I was raised. And it was dang good scotch, ma'am, dang good scotch. And... I grew up in the States. But it's been my Canadian experience that's changed me as a man. I'm a better dad because of Canada. I'm a better husband because of Canada. I'm a better man because of Canada. I'm changed because of this country. People ask me, they asked me the other day in Toronto, why the playgrounds, why the projects? Because you changed me. And I have a moral, moral obligation to do all I can for the country that changed me. How many say that makes sense? It's called responsibility. That which I can do, I ought to do. Responsibility. All of the Let Them Be Kids projects honor fallen soldiers or fallen RCMP officers or fallen community heroes. We've honored Corporal Kluke, Answorth Dreyer, Anthony Benecca, Corporal Albert Storm, Nicola Goddard. Anybody ever heard these names? Mm. I remember the day in Crystal Beach, Ontario when Corporal Storm's mom cried on my shoulder as we named the playground after him. Two weekends ago in Charlottetown at St. Jean's Elementary School, we named the playground after Nicola Goddard, the first woman ever killed in combat of the Canadian forces. Her widower tweeted in, texted in from Kabul, because we broadcast all of our projects live. And he just sent in a message that, thank you for honoring Nicola. What's your point? My point isn't that I'm for war, I'm against war. Anybody that's for war is a fool, stupid. I'm for that young person, though, that's willing to act on their responsibility as a citizen. And we honor them for that sacrifice. What's your point? My point is that you live in what I believe to be the greatest land on the face of the globe. I believe that because it changed me. And I'm impressed by the people here tonight that we recognize because they're acting out their responsibility as citizens of the greatest land on the face of the globe. They sacrifice their time and their energy. They sacrifice themselves for the betterment of others. How many of you agree with me? Those are heroes. You can clap. And they've shown us the way. So how about each one of us in this room that, how can we give a little bit more? How can we act on our responsibility? Hmm. I said to my wife, when I was over, over there, I called her up real quick. I said, you know what? We need to do a little bit more. 
we need to give a little bit more. I said, I'm reading the bios. I'm reading the, the information. We, ne we need to do more. We need to act on our responsibility. And of course, my, the response from the Minister of Finance, who is not Jim Flaherty, it's Gina Hill. I don't know if you've ever met her, but <laughs> she's the Minister of Finance, man, and I don't know if you ever know. Yeah, yeah. So the Minister of Finance says to me, oh, are you talking about giving more money? Um, no. I'm talking about being innovative and creative and coming up with new ideas and supporting those who are innovative and creative and acting as a catalyst. See, that's the other thing that all of you that we're honoring tonight have taught me. I don't have to do it all. I just need to be a catalyst. I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. That which I can do, I ought to do, and that which I ought to do, by God's grace, I will do. Commitment. If you've been involved in the voluntary sector, whether you're being honored or not tonight, you've been a volunteer, a board member, a staff person, whatever. If you've been involved in the voluntary sector for more than 10 years, raise your hand. And turn up the house lights really quick, if you could, Sean. You've been involved in the voluntary sector 15 years, raise your hand. You've been involved in the voluntary sector 20 years, raise your hand. 25 years or more, raise your hand. And stand up. If you've been involved in the voluntary sector, stand up. Don't sit down. Hey, don't sit down. Shh, hold on real quick. Now, with all due respect to those that play in the NHL and the CFL, with all due respect to a Canadian Idol and So You Think You Can Dance Canada, let me be absolutely clear. These are the heroes of Canada. These are the people that build a nation. These are the people that build a community. Through their efforts and energies and their sacrifice, we are better because of 25 plus years, a quarter of a century of giving to others. Honor these people. Young people in the room, emulate these people. Be like them. Aspire to their honor and nobility because of their service and sacrifice. Give them a round of applause if you would, please. <laughs> the difference between involved and committed is a chicken and a pig in a bacon and egg breakfast. The chicken is involved. That pig is committed. Some of you know where I'm going to go with this right now, don't you? <laughs> that means that all of those people that stood up are a pigs. I'm sorry to do that to you, but for the rest of the evening, and if you work together or you see each other, you'll hear this in Sobeys. Oink, 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 <laughs> oink, oink. So I'm going to ask all of us to say to ourselves, how will I be remembered? How will we as a community be remembered? By history? Will we be a beacon of light? Will we be a ray of hope? Will we have and, and grasp, will we grasp the opportunity that we have that since we have a citizen in this region from every country on the face of God's planet who can communicate back home what community should feel like Community is not a group of people that live in close proximity to one another and share the buying and selling and uh, consuming of goods together. That's not community. Community is what you've taught us. That if you believe that tomorrow can be better than it was yesterday, that if you, you take some of the $86,000 you've been given and, and give it to lighten the burden of your fellow man, if you act on your responsibility as a citizen of the greatest land on the face of the earth today, and if you're committed to it, then in some small way you can make your world a better place. And the cumulative effect of that is a better world and a better community. And thousands of people from all over the globe will know your story because the citizens who are here will tell the people back home and you'll show the world the way. I'm honored to be asked to say a few words tonight. I lay at your feet that you have a tremendous opportunity to define history, both individually and collectively. And I'm excited about those that we will honor tonight. Your bios, your information have inspired me to do a little bit more tomorrow than I was doing yesterday. Thank you for your time.